Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, Robin. How are you? And hi, Mrs. Karen G from Maryland. Hi, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Am I don't know if I've met you before on here. Uh, if I have, please refresh my memory. And if I have not, then welcome to uh, Shirley's Wind Down Tuesday. Thank you for stopping by. Hope all is well. Um, as usual, let me say hi to the Facebook and to the YouTube viewers that are out there watching but may not come into the live. And also to everyone that may watch the replay. As usual, thank you for doing that as well. Thank you all for supporting the channel and my live uh, Tuesday wind down Tuesday with my Stella Rosa Blackberry wine today. So that's what I'm having today. One of my favorite wines, Stella Rosa, I love. Blackberry, I really love. Blackberry and blueberry. This is blueberry, I believe. But anyway, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Kingsbury Craft from Washington. Hi, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Becky from Texas. And Mrs. Karen G, you say you usually just watch. Well, I'm glad that you decided to stop in today, and I hope that you would add to the conversation. We do uh, love having questions and comments and, and all kinds of stuff going on, so that, that's what keeps everything moving. Hi, Val. How are you? Thank you for stopping in. Appreciate it. So people are coming in. I'm sure there are people out there watching. And um, we'll, as usual, give it a few more minutes to get more people in here. Then we will get um, everything started. So some of you are aware that um, I got a chance to meet my great granddaughter for the first time alive. I've seen her, of course, on FaceTime numerous of times and everything, but actually to have her in my presence live, able to hold her, hug her, have her on my lap and all of that was so special and is so special because they're still here. They'll be here until Thursday. Uh, didn't get a chance to see them today because they had other plans and all of that which was perfectly fine for me, but we'll get back together tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to see her again. And um, she is so sweet. I tell you, it was so endearing that um, she, she went to her grandma first, which is my daughter. And, and because she's seen her quite a bit, she's out, been out there to visit there in Illinois. She's been there to visit several times. And so after she hugged my, my, my daughter, her grandma, her daughter, my daughter handed her to me and she came straight to me, hugged me, sat on my lap. We, you know, embraced and everything. No wiggling, no whining, no crying, no trying to get down, get away. None of that. The whole day. I was so impressed and so happy. I mean, she act like she knew me, which, you know, I guess she remembered me from the videos and remembered my voice. I don't know, but she did not act like I was a stranger, and that made me feel so good. So I really had a good time with her yesterday. Uh, she's very smart, um, alert, all over the place, had a ball. Her, her grandma act like it was Christmas. Because she had all kinds of little toys and stuff for her to play with. And she wanted to get into everything, which she did. <laughs> she had herself a wonderful time doing all of that. So it was, um, like I said, it was a very fun and pleasant experience getting getting a chance to, to see her and hold her and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to more of that tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, Robin says she's really cute. God, I sent out some pictures to some, some of the ladies. That's why they're saying that. And Becky says she is a doll. And uh, Carol says precious times for sure. Definitely that. And hi, hi Carol and um, Marissa. Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. 
So yeah, that was um, the highlight of my day because I knew that they were coming. And uh, so I was excited. And of course I got some things ready for her as usual. Um, so, you know, she'll be taking tons of stuff back. I didn't go too overboard. I didn't go too overboard. Just a few, just a few little outfits, not too much, because she's already got tons of stuff for me since since the moment she came into the world. And um, my grandson, my first grandson, daughter. I have five grandsons, and um, one two great granddaughters and she's the she's the baby she's the baby so uh it's always good to to see family and everything like that so i do appreciate it. so carol you said we had all three of our grandsons this weekend without their parents we had a blast oh that's so fun that's so fun it it really is um i remember when all my kid, grandkids are grown with kids you know only only two of them had kids. The other, the other three do not. But anyway, um, you know, when they were little, it was a lot of fun. And this particular grandson is my daughter's son. And uh, so I have actually spent the most time with him because at one point he lived, they lived with me. And, and so I, spend a lot of time with him. So I have a lot of fond memories of him as a baby and, and a, a little boy and growing up and everything. So I'm now, I'm getting a chance to to uh, do number two all over again <laughs> with his daughter. So, and I was so glad they had a, a girl because I tell you, I don't have no girls. I got just those look those two and and the um, the oldest one she she's a big girl now she's not little anymore so i only had the one little one and um hopefully when she gets to be a little bit older um i'll be able to really spend more time with them because that's when they're the most fun when they're three four and five and six years old where you can actually uh ha have a um a conversation with them <laughs> Conversations get to be really interesting and fun. And that's where the memories are. So, yeah, um, it is a lot of fun when you're with your your grandkids. It's a, it's a whole different different vibe. I laugh at my daughter because obviously this is her first grandchild because she only has the, the one son. And uh, this is his first child. So she's experiencing what I experienced when she had him. So, you know, just doting over her, her granddaughter and just, you know, loving her up and having a wonderful time and all of that and, and experiencing what it feels like to be a grandma. Because it, it is a different feeling. Those of you that have experienced it, you understand. Those of you that have not will. I um, have a cousin that laughed at me uh, when my grandson was first born, because he's the first, the one that, that's here now visiting. And because I was doting over him so much, and it was just, you know, all of this about him and everything. And she didn't quite understand until she had her first grandson. And she she did tell me, she said, now I understand. <laughs> she said, now I understand. So, yep, it, it, it's different. Hi, Leslie. How are you? Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Um, just waiting for a few more people. Okay, it's already 10 after 8. So I am going to go ahead and get started because I usually try to get started by 10 after 8. And so today's topic was recommended and appreciate the, the recommendation as usual, because I need all the help I can to try to come up with topics and everything. And um, we do have some teachers that are part of our group. And we do have some nurses, namely me, and that are part of the group. And I know it was mentioned that, uh, 
you know, why don't we talk about Teachers Appreciation uh, Week that's coming up just before Mother's Day, the 6th through the 10th. And I was thinking, I said, didn't we used to celebrate Nurses Week around that time? So I Googled it, and sure enough, Nurses Week is also the same week, 6th through the 12th. And so with that being said, uh, I said, okay, well, we have to honor them both. They're both sheroes or heroes because we have men and women that are both teachers and, and, and nurses. And um, they do not get the appreciation or the recognition that uh, is deserving of them. And Robin, you say you um, you were a nurse. And um, I, I always like to say I am a nurse. I just don't nurse. <laughs> I still have my degree and my license are retired. I finally retired the license, but I kept them up until I believe 22. When it was time to renew them, I decided I wasn't going through that headache no more since I wasn't planning on using them anymore. So I just retired them. But anyway, I don't nurse anymore, obviously. Haven't really nursed in a long time because I went from nursing into pharmaceutical sales. But I worked hard for that nursing license, child. So I've always recognized myself as a nurse. <laughs> I am, and I guess I always will be considered or considered myself as a registered, a BSN registered nurse. So that that's my title. And Robin, you are a nurse. And Marina's not on here yet, I don't think. And I know she was a teacher. And I don't know who else in our group that uh, are teachers or were teachers. But if you are, just let me know so you can be recognized. Uh, Want to do that. So based upon all of that information, the fact that we don't recognize our teachers and our nurses as much as I should, as much as we should, I decided that I would go ahead and talk about them. And I also thought about it, it was a coincidence that, or maybe not, that both of those professions, which are predominantly women, as we know, don't want to leave the guys out at all. But uh, that profession is predominantly female. Don't know why that's the fact. And it falls right around Mother's Day. So I don't know if that was on purpose or why. I do know as far as nursing is concerned, because as I was researching that, uh, Florence Nightingale, which is the mother of nurses, birthday is that week. I believe it's the 12th. I believe I'm not. Don't don't quote me on that. And if you know the exact date, let, let me know. But I know her birthday is around that that week. And that was the reason why that particular week or June 6th through the 12th was uh, chosen uh, as Nurses Week. And um, I see Marina just, just popped in and I know she uh, is a retired teacher. So like I said, I knew we had at least one in the group, maybe more. So hopefully, like I said, if they are, let me know. And then Leslie said you were an instructor of photography, so definitely a teacher. And you were an Army drill sergeant. I didn't know that. I don't remember you telling me you were a drill sergeant. So you definitely was teaching. My um, my um, my oldest son was a Marine drill sergeant. So I, I know about those drill sergeants. So anyway, let's talk about what can we do to celebrate our teachers. And... I know that um, we can't give, we can't make, well, we can't make apples and things like that. <laughs> you know, a lot of times the, the old thing and what you see on TV where the kid brings an apple to the teacher and, and I don't even know if they do things like that. But it's a lot of nice things that we can do for teachers and they kind of overlap for nurses as well. So you'll see some, some things that are definitely going to be a duplicate when I start talking about the teachers. So I did my uh, AI search as usual to see what they were going to come up with and if there was anything that they suggested that was any different than what I would have suggested. And um, not really. 
So what I'm going to do is just go down a list of things. And if you can think of anything else, please add that. Because I'm trying to think about what can we give a teacher that would be beneficial to her that she can either just enjoy alone or something that would be beneficial for her in her classroom. And um, I thought about bookmarks. And there are so many bookmarks. You can do the freestanding lace bookmarks and uh, vinyl bookmarks and, and, and Marina made us some very beautiful embroidered bookmarks with the initial on it and also corner big bookmarks. They are so cute. I know um, um, Embroidery Library has some that I purchased from them that are shaped, well, they're corner, but they are decorated like fruit like strawberry and orange and I believe it's an apple or a grape or something but anyway I think it's like a set of four and they are really really cute and that would be something that um, I think that would be a really good gift to give to a teacher a whole set of those corner big bookmarks or a set of the regular bookmarks where she can use to um, you know, where she's doing her her, uh, her lesson plans or she's researching something or whatever. Because when we talk about teachers, we talk about teachers on all levels. Like Leslie was mentioning the fact that she taught photography and also as a drill instructor, which she had to teach, teach the cadets um, or the recruits what they needed to know. So that was one thing that I thought about. Now, of course, we always can do sweatshirts, T-shirts, hoodies, those kinds of things. And I did go on on, on um, Etsy, and I saw like a million zillion sweatshirts, T-shirts, um, hoodies, those kinds of things with all kinds of beautiful designs and cute designs and cute sayings and what have you that you can um, draw from as inspiration to do or get the design or what have you to make a really nice gift for a teacher. Another one is something that Taisha uh, told me that she does for, for her grandson's teacher um, when he was in school. Um, I think he graduated last year, this past uh, semester. But anyway, the, the composition book covers that we all have done, I believe, We've all done some of those. The, the, the mini ones are the big ones. And I know that I, ha I have a video showing you how to do them. There are several videos out there to show you how to do them. They're really nice projects. I like doing them. And they can be made up to look so nice. And it would be something that they probably could, depending upon the size that you make, that they could put their grade books in or just any kind of notebook type thing that you could do. You can also do just a regular cover where they can put their favorite book in, or you can do something where they could carry their Bible in, like a Bible cover. Any of those kinds of things can be made uh, by embroidery and any type of crafting that you may, may do. Um, those of you that are good at other kinds of crafting in addition to or besides embroidery. Throws and blankets, those are really good too because um, there are times when the school just, the heat goes out in the school and I know they get cold. <laughs> I've seen so many times where either they didn't have any air or they didn't have any heat. Now, I know if they don't have heat, they're going to definitely not have school or close the school or what have you because it'd be too cold. But it might just be cold in that particular room or whatever, and, and they would appreciate having a throat or a blanket or something like that. So um, think about that. Or they just have something they could use outside of school. It doesn't have to be anything that they use in school. Um, another thing they brought up was apron. Now. 
I wasn't quite sure where to put the apron because I don't know how many. Well, you can use it at home. You can always use it at home and you can always decorate it, embroider it and put some type of teacher type uh, uh, motif of some kind on it. So it doesn't have to be something that they use at school. But if they're doing type of projects at school, like painting or, or anything that where they could possibly get get dirty, then having an apron would be a good idea. And even, I don't know if they have home economics anymore in these schools. I don't I don't know. But if you know a teacher that does that, then that's also something that they could use it for. And um, towels. You can never not be in good grace with giving some type of towel, whether it is a set of kitchen towels, bath towels, golf towels, um, uh, cleaning towels for 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 the classroom. Uh, you know, wiping off the desk and and stuff like that. You know, just tidying up her room, stuff like that that she could use uh, some type of towels. You know, if you're going to give some type of uh, cleaning towel or whatever, the dollar store is an excellent place to buy those micro towels and stuff. And you can probably just knit her, uh, stitch her name on it or stitch her room number on it or stitch her class or whatever on there. And, and that would be something that you could give as a gift with, with a cleaning product. Uh, products in it or something like that maybe because you know they have restrictions with chemicals and stuff so you may or may not be able to do that I don't know but you could definitely give um, a, 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 some type of cloth or something I would think um, and then again you can always give her something that she can use her for herself at home personally it doesn't have to be something again think about it that has to be done at school um, the other thing that I saw that was really cute, I didn't think about it until I saw it, but I remember, I believe it was last spring, when the, the, the biggest wave was doing the curve around the neck. And I remember putting doing a shirt that had spring, actually I had the shirt on today, that had spring tam on it, and uh, that I put on there spring tam. But this, the one that I saw on Etsy, had the teacher's name on it. And I thought that was really cute, Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Jones, whatever, especially at the beginning of the school year when she's getting new students and what have you, and and they may not know who she is and to be able to have her name on her, on her shirt for the first day of class or uh, her class, her, you know, whatever information as a curve uh, shirt collar I thought was really cute and a great idea. I also saw jacket backs and it just said like I am a teacher or hug a teacher or thank a teacher or anything like like that on the back of a jacket. Makeup bags nice survival kits. <laughs> now what's in a survival kit? Whatever you want to put in it, whatever you think a teacher would need for a survival, it could just be um, something that you know that she's going to need in her classroom, pens, pencils, staplers, uh, uh, stapler remover, uh, little small scissors, chalk, anything in there. Some headache medicine, <laughs> band-aid, whatever, in the survival kit and just kind of make a nice little kit and, and, and put it in a nice pouch and have something cute embroidered on it. Uh, we mentioned t-shirts. Um, now, I saw shirts that had the pockets that looked like crayon or pens or pencils and stuff like that were sticking in it even though it wasn't so you that that is the design that's really cute so you can have like the pen or the 
crayon or pencil or whatever, and then you can have her name on there, or her class or whatever, something like that, I think would be really cute as a um, a gift. Now, I also have down here duffel bags. You know how you can stitch on a duffel bag or some type of travel bag or a nice tote. Now, I know the so long group were doing totes and a nice tote for a teacher would be really, really good because she can put all of her stuff that she needs to go back and forth to school in, um, go to work with in her nice tote. And you can monogram it or, or again, put her name, put the uh, class, what have you on there. Her subject that she teaches, all of that can be something that you can put on there. Um, now, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen. <laughs> Maureen, I just glanced over at your at your message here. Hi, Ann. How you doing? Hi, Deborah. How are you? I just saw you two pop in there, but I, I just glanced at this one that Marina just put out there. Just tick. <laughs> I got to put that. Marina, our Fridays, our survival bag would include a shot glass and a small <laughs> drink of choice. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, Hundred percent. I'm pretty sure. Along with 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 a uh, uh, something for a headache. <laughs> I never wanted to teach. I just knew for me <laughs> that would not be too good. Um. Val, Val, you said you did teaching for clinical rotation and preceptorships. Okay, yes. And Val is a doctor. So, yes, she did her teaching. And Marina said, Marina said, teacher is always in need of school supplies, making gift card holders, embroider a tote, and include tissue boxes and sanitizer, band aids, pens, and pencils. Yes, and one of the things that I have on here is those cute little sanitizer holders that you can make and and uh, put some sanitizer in there. And um, that would be really great to go into the survival kit or into her tote or anything like that. So I think that that is, those are really, really good gifts. Um, and again, Marina said making personalized ID badge holders. Okay, good. Good. See, all of this is coming from a teacher. So she knows exactly what teachers need. Um, what I was uh, going to say a minute ago was the multiplication rounds. I don't know if any of you all remember seeing this. Um, I, I saw this maybe a year or so ago, and I know they still have a pattern. I think I bought it. I never did make it. Where they... Uh, I don't know how to best describe it other than the multiplication round. It's the multiplication tables, but it's, it's uh, in a round um, design. And that's something that she probably could use in her classroom. Those uh, teachers that are teaching math and, and multiplication timetables and stuff like that. You know, with the new math, I have no clue what they do. I don't I don't know what they do or how they do it, but multiplication is multiplication. Two times two is going to be four. I don't care if it's new math, old math, side math, or what kind of math. It should be the same answer. How you come up with the answer is always the new math, but the answer should always be the same unless something has changed. So I, I don't know. But I just thought that those were really cute. Um, cute gifts to give even you know a lot of people were making them for students which definitely would be good but it is something i think that a teacher could use in their class because it keeps the kids interested interested when they have something different you have something different than that gets their attention wall hangings and this is something that they can you can make and the teacher can put it in her classroom. 
because they're always decorating their bulletin boards and stuff like that. And if you have something cute that is pertaining to her classroom, pertaining to her subject or whatever, could really be cute to go as a wall hanging in her classroom. And I also thought about a clock. Now, I do know that I've seen um, designs for a clock for crafting. I've seen it for birds and, and they had the sewing stuff and all of that. I have not seen anything that was specifically pertaining to a teacher or teaching in general, but I don't think it would be hard to make because as long as you came up with all the little tiny um, designs that you wanted to put and just make it go all the way around in a circle and create your own clock because you could have... You know, you can have um, books, rulers, um, microscope, science and me, um, whatever, whatever else that they use in school, pens, pencils, crayons, paper clips, uh, what have you, all of that going around in a circle and make a clock where she actually could have hanging up on her wall. Um, basket linings, because I know a lot of times they have baskets or, or what have you where they're putting different things in and um, her organizational baskets and stuff. And if you had knew what your particular teacher that you're gonna get uh, give a gift to whatever their need is. They could have the subjects uh, on the lining or they could have uh, the name of um, what the supply is on the lining that that uh, sits down inside of the basket, if you understand what, what I'm talking about. I have some baskets I don't think I, I don't have anything around, but usually they're wire baskets and then they have cloth lining that you can actually tie on, but you can untie it and wash it and stick it back on. That's what I'm talking about. Those kinds of baskets and then you can actually stitch on it and, and put a name of some kind on there. Um, and that made me think about a bucket. Now, I know we just finished with Easter. And uh, what is it? Five below had a zillion million thousand trillion Easter bunny buckets that everybody got and put the kids' name on it and sold it and made tons of money. And the kids were, you know, blessed with a Easter bucket instead of Easter basket. Well, the buckets are a nice size. Now I don't know where else you can go, or even if nine. Five Below has just plain buckets. I think I did see some, but I thought about if that's the case, then instead of it being an Easter thing or, or a bunny rabbit thing, if it's just a plain bucket with whatever that material is, that canvas material, then you can stitch again, like I said, for the basket lining. You could do the same thing for the bucket and um, have that for the teacher for their classroom or her organizational process that she's doing, you know, anything to help in, in the classroom. And then it also becomes part of their decoration because I know especially in the elementary schools and, and, and uh, classes, they like to have colorful decorative organized things in there for the kids so thought about that and of course a card a plain simple thank you card that you embroider <laughs> that's really cute and something that she would love and keep um i thought about you know we get bouquets for mother's day why not a bouquet made of freestanding lace for the teacher. They have um, so many designs of the different flowers that you can actually 
do the freestanding lace and put them together. They are three, you make them 3D, you have to put them together and you end up with a bouquet. That would be a really special gift to make a freestanding lace bouquet to hand out to, to a, a, a teacher, special teacher. I, I don't know if I would do a whole bunch of them, but some people are really fast and quick and, and very crafty and they can. For me, one and done. <laughs> I would be one one of the one and done people. Uh, earrings, freestanding while we're on freestanding lace, freestanding lace earrings or vinyl earrings or a combination of both and uh, any kind of jewelry that can be done with freestanding lace, bracelets, necklaces, and earrings, those kinds of things can be done with freestanding lace. So that would make a really cute gift. Um, I've even thought about mats. Uh, and that's for the younger, the teachers that are teaching younger kids where they have mats that they put out. And I don't know, I, I do know that some of them you might be able to sublimate on, but then some of them you might be able to make some type of covering for the mat where it comes on and on, where it could be washed. But you could do mats and stuff to help her out. And it could have not necessarily the kid's name on it because they, they change out. But the teacher's name or the, te or the classroom number or the, uh, you know, Mrs. Jones kindergarten, something like that, on the mat. Purses, cute little purses. Pillows. And the pillows can go for, for the teacher at home to take home and have, or where it can be used again, as I mentioned, in the classroom, um, mainly for, like I said, the younger kids that will be probably napping, napping and things like that. I mentioned sanitizer holders. Um, doorknob hangers. where again it could have the teacher's um, name on it usually i would assume in the hallway it has what class this is or what room number this is but this uh does it have the teacher's name on it or what have you i don't know but maybe a door a nice door not door knob hanger would not be bad or a door hanger i saw some door hangers that looked like they were done as a craft project, like with wood and vinyl, stuff like that. But who's to say that you couldn't put together something that you embroidered or a combination of your crafting stuff that you do besides outside of uh, embroidery that would be nice as a door hanger. Um, cup cozies, to put that Friday Survivor Kit drink in. Sit that that uh, cup down in there and keep keep it keep it cool keep it cool, and you can put um, the teacher's name on it. Key fobs, key chains with the teacher's name on it, or a cute little apple motif, anything like that. Um, scarf, headbands, caps, beanies, bucket caps. All of those things I hear that bucket caps are coming back in in style. So people are doing um, bucket caps more and more. And so those are things that can be done. Headbands, scarves, caps, beanies, bucket caps, ponytail scrunchies, um, and backpacks. Those are the things that I have listed on here that I thought would be good for a teacher. And let me see, did the AI say anything different? Nope, nothing, nothing different. Nothing to add to it. So I think we came up with some good things, some good Okay. I just had a little blackout. I don't know if that you guys saw it or not. 
hopefully that's not going to be an issue tonight because you know we had that a few um weeks back so hopefully that's not going to be an issue but i did see just uh a second of it hi deborah i don't think i spoke to you yet but thank you for stopping by i may have i don't know don't remember um robin you said you think you have that pattern and uh what pattern are you referring to are you referring to the little round multiplication patterns is that what you're talking about i'm not sure and carol carol you said what do you say you said our 1055 x machine scans so embroidered student drawings are or, or have them write their names and embroider that could be fun that's an excellent idea thank you see that's the whole purpose of this people adding on yes that is an excellent idea where you can have uh that would be so cute and especially if it was a way to do it as a surprise that would be really cute i think that that um uh, would be something that the teacher would really really like a lot especially i mean if it's a you can't have the whole class do it but if that's your child's teacher and your child did a drawing or something for that particular teacher and you stitched it out and maybe framed it up or something and gave it to her as a keepsake gift or something like that i think would be something that she would really cherish and appreciate and like a lot so i think that that was a really good idea oh yeah you said yes you were talking about the round um multiplication i have it too somewhere in 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 my unidentified stash of design <laughs> i have it because I'm, I'm pretty sure that i did buy it uh a while back and of course i've never done it but that might be something we need to do as a solo <laughs> bring out at least five designs that we really intended to do and have never done and compare and see how many of us have the same design and then get together and stitch that design out whatever that project may be like we did with the christmas tree skirt because it was so funny that it was so many of us that had bought the christmas tree skirts design and had never stitched it out and i mean i know i had had mine over a year and i think most of us had had it at least a year and we never ever did it and probably never would have if we had not done it as a group so who knows maybe that's what our next project should be <laughs> What do all of us have? And we've had it for a while and never did and have never um, taken the time to do it. And, and let's get together as a group and do it. Get it done. You bought it. You must have wanted to do it. You just didn't do it. <laughs> so that's what I have for teachers. If anybody else has anything else to add for teachers, please do. Now, what I'm going to tell you, as I had mentioned before, and I didn't touch on anything, uh, not too much that you could do outside of embroidery because a lot of us do a lot of different kind of crafting. We do sublimation, vinyls and, and, and crocheting and knitting and all of those quilting and all of that kind of stuff. So there are definitely a lot of different gifts that can be done and made uh, in those uh, genres as well that um can be excellent gifts so feel free to throw those in as well we're not limiting ourselves just uh mainly to embroidery uh because i know uh, uh, there are lots of us that do sublimation as well and you can you know do i i thought about several things that you could do with with the uh, specifically with sublimation i thought about the puzzles that you can get and you can probably um have some you know create a puzzle for the teacher to use especially with the elementary the lower elementary class where you can put it together 
and spell out a word or something that the teacher can teach the kid how to spell. And like her name, you know, my name is Mrs. Brown and this is how you spell Mrs. Brown. And then she can have that as a project in her class. The kids learning how to spell Mrs. Brown. She can put it up on the board. Sure, they can learn it that way. But wouldn't it be fun to just put the puzzle together and do it? Something different. Like I said, the more creative you are when you're dealing with little kids, the easier they learn. Uh, hi, Arlene. How are you? Thanks for dropping by. And I'm so glad that you were able to drop in. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate the support. Um, let me see. Did I get everybody so far? Okay, now let's turn our attention to nurses. Now, you would think I would come up with a zillion million different things <laughs> for nurses, but I didn't. And mainly because pretty much the same as with teachers. You can do a lot of stuff if they're going to take it home, but if it's something that they can use on the job, it's more restrictive. So you start thinking about, okay, can they use this on the job? Mm -mm. Can they take that on the job? Mm -mm. So that kind of narrows things down. But the first thing that I put on, on the list for the nurse, and which is, I hope I mentioned it on the um, teacher, I'm not sure, but a backpack. Now, backpacks are not cheap, but you can get some relatively um, affordable backpacks. And uh, it's just like a tote, one or the other. But with a backpack, you don't have to do the toting part. And, and um, that would be an interesting, interesting um, gift, I think. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of things in, for nurses that are not for the job. And one would be loungewear or PJs and house shoes. And I mentioned that kind of on the same line that Marina mentioned the uh, the survive, survivor kit. And I have survivor kit on this one as well. But when you get off from work after nursing all day, you want to relax. You want to put on something comfortable and you want something comfortable on your feet. So that's what made me think about house shoes, loungewear, and PJ, something that I can get into and be comfortable. And you can put love a nurse on there, thank the nurse on there. You can put whatever nursing motif on there that you want to, to make it specific. But I think that that would really be something that, that would be cute. Um, Scrubs, hats, caps, ponytail scrunchies, um, lab coats, all of those things, you can have something pertaining to a nurse on there. Now, scrubs, I don't know what they can or cannot wear on the job, but a lot of people wear, their, wear scrubs out. They buy, buy scrubs like people buy jogging clothes because they're comfortable and it's something they're used to wearing. So um, they can have on a scrub set and it has nurse whatever, whatever on there. Not necessarily what they wear on the job, but what they actually would wear out to go shopping and 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 rip and run with the kids and stuff like that but they're comfortable so I, you see you see the theme here comfort <laughs> comfort i need to be comfortable because i'm tired <laughs> so and then of course scrunchies for your for your uh ponytail and 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 the uh, um the um the the scrub tops and bottom and caps the um i have it on here let me see if i can find it where i have 
thought I wrote it down. They're not the, the just just the, the hats that they wear around to put the hair inside of. And I, I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. But anyway, I know what what I had planned to write down. I don't know how I missed that. Utility bags. Now, this would be more for like home health nurses that carry stuff around more so than a nurse that actually works in a hospital. And keep in mind when we're talking about nurses, um, we have uh, nurses that um, do home health, hospice, um, all types, geriatric nurses, uh, nursing home nurses, skilled nursing uh, facilities, uh, CCRC, just tons and tons and tons and tons of different kind of nursing positions that we're still nurses because uh, the last job that I had, even though I did not nurse nurse, I still had my nursing license and I was working in the capacity of a nurse in an admission office because I was reviewing medical records. Uh, so you had to be licensed to do that, but still working in the capacity of a nurse. So I would have been able to wear some of the things that I mentioned, like um, um well, I wasn't wearing lab coats. I wasn't going to put a lab coat on because I didn't want nobody to think I was going, going to do no nursing to nobody. <laughs> but I could have worn something like a sweatshirt, T-shirt. Uh, 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 if I had come in there with a hoodie, they probably would have died. But <laughs> the hoodie jacket, put it that way, the one that unzips and opens up and stuff like that. I've worn that where you could have... Um, could have put nurse on there, love a nurse, thank a nurse, help a nurse, save a nurse, whatever you want to put on there. And Val, I see you. And see, we got our nurses and doctors jumping in. Stethoscope tags. I have that down here. I also have the stethoscope uh, uh, covers, like the little scrunchy things that you can cover the stethoscopes with that protects your neck and everything when they have the stethoscope around their neck. And again, like I said, stethoscope tags is what uh what um um val mentioned and you mentioned pins now i said pin pin toppers you know designed by juju has these pencil toppers that you can make where you can put the toppers on the uh, and i'm calling them toppers i don't know exactly what they are but they go on top of the pen they're cute little decorative things that stick on top of the pen or the pencil or something like that. You can put some kind of cute little nursing type or medical type uh, motif on there. That would be really cute, something that they can have on the job. Um, can nurses on the job carry waste? Uh, um, waste bags to carry their stuff i've not seen one back in my day a thousand years ago we couldn't because it, it but everybody is very um more relaxed i i came through the ranks of white uniforms white holes and white shoes so that was a you know ancient stuff the people are wearing tennis shoes and 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 and, and uh crocs and and colorful uh, scrubs and stuff like that so i don't know what they can the fanny packs yeah i don't know if they can carry fanny packs or not now we stuffed our pockets and we had pocket protectors that's what we had what do they use now if there are any nurses out there that, that does anything now um Okay, Val said, my nurses love pouches and bags that were customized, especially if they had unusual names. So there you go. Now, Val can tell you what that what's current. And it makes sense because they they need something to put their their stuff in. You know, we had scissors and tape and pins and and pen lights and um, 
what else did we carry around with us? Well, back then we had nor keys too. <laughs> I don't care. No, I'm sure they nobody has no kind of keys anymore. But that's the stuff that we carried in our pockets and 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 uh stuff your pocket, your lab coat or whatever you had on, and you reach down there and get all your stuff out. And you would be bulging like that. It would have been great to have a fanny pack or something that you could carry around. But I I don't know if that's um, where they could do. And Val, you said, I had a problem trying to find things for the male nurses. Okay, so you guys chime in with the male nurse type thing. Now, as far as a fanny pack is concerned, if it's allowed, I don't think that that would be an issue for a male nurse. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to think. So it is. Robin said they could when I was still nursing in 01. OK, OK. Well, you've nursed since me. <laughs> 01's one's been a long time ago, just like mine's been a long time ago. But um, what they do now, I do not know. I do not know what what a nurse can do now. Marina says supplement a clipboard can be useful for a nurse or a teacher. Yes. And Robin says she used to make a lot of scrubs. So yes, that's that's good. And um, what else have we come up with? So. We have the survival kit. What can you put in the survival kit? I I would not. Well, on a I can't say on a Friday because nurses don't their 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 week does not always end on a Friday, unfortunately. Unfortunately, Marina, like like the teachers did. So their survival kit would have to be more on the on the level of um Definitely something for a headache. Because <laughs> you're going to have something for a headache. <laughs> something that you can rub your feet with. <laughs> Some good, 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 good lotion for your hands and your feet. Because you're constantly washing your hands. Constantly watch washing your hands. So your hands get chapped. So you need some really, really good hand cream, hand lotion, something like that for your hands because they get chapped. And you really could use as a survival kit something that is going to help your sore feet because you're up on your feet, ripping and running back and forth, up and down the halls if you're working in a hospital. And even if you're not working in a hospital, oftentimes you're still ripping and running up and down halls because I did. Um, you mentioned in key fobs. And I have that on here, keychains, key fobs, watch bands, and that's like for sublimation type stuff. And then, of course, I do have the the uh, jewelry, sub, the um, freestanding lace jewelry, the freestanding lace bouquet, the freestanding uh, uh, lace um, flowers that I mentioned, the bouquet. Those are things that they can take home. Tumblr uh, cozies or koozies, whatever you call them, that you put around your cups or your or your tumblers, what have you, to to keep those. Um, it it doesn't necessarily keep it cool or or anything like that, but they're just cute to be around there. Um, caps, purses, wallets, blankets, pillows, and throws. They can always use that. Uh, they can always use the towels, as I mentioned, uh, in the hoop mini purses. They are cute. Uh, cards, don't forget, you can always do the cards. Sanitizer holders. And uh, let me see what else do I have on here. That's pretty much what I ran through 
when it came down to nurses because again you have to be careful of what they can have at work so val said um the key fobs and the badge holders that would be something nice andrea said gummies <laughs> Put the gummies in the survivor bag. <laughs> what kind of gummies? <laughs> and let's see what we can do. What can we give male um, nurses and male teachers? Well, the, the teachers are generic. The gifts mostly that we mentioned are generic for teachers because if they're for the classroom, they're for the classroom. It doesn't matter whether it's male or female. Now, when we're talking about men, the, the sweatshirts, T-shirts, and hoodies and things like that can definitely be for men. So that is, is a given. The, the scrubs can be done for men. Lab coats for men. Survival kits. Stethoscope tags. Um, even the watch bands, the key fobs, and the key chains. The, the, the tumbler coos, all of those things can be given to men as well. So I think we got the men covered. Even loungewear we can do for men. We don't have to just be for women. So I think I think just about everything that I have on this list is uh is um um not gender specific. It's it's for either or. So it I don't think that it is definitely the only thing would be ponytail uh scrunch uh scrunchies and some of these men got long hair so they might need them too just don't make it out of any feminine fabric <laughs> then we might be okay and um the stethoscope covers if you if you're um more neutral with the colors and everything with that I think we will be okay. So I don't think there were too many things that I mentioned that would not be appropriate to give to a male Val. I think a male could handle the same thing. And Carol said, funny socks, funny socks for a male teacher. Women too. And funny socks for, um, for, um, for nurses as well. Because I don't think that there's a lot of restrictions on on um, on um, the socks that you wear. I know they used to have restrictions on your shoes, but I know a lot of these people are wearing Crocs and stuff. And I know um, where I've worked at in the past, you couldn't wear Crocs. But I've seen a lot of nurses with Crocs on, and I don't think they're the most comfortable shoes in the world. But obviously, they are because a lot of people wear them. But uh, I think that that would just kind of um, allow them to personalize their their. Um... Good night, good night, Marina. I I'll talk to you later on. Okay, you take care. Um, what I was going to say, I I think that it allows you to personalize their their uh their uniform. By having some funny socks and stuff, or you can personalize the socks too. Because Andrea and I were were having having a conversation a while back about embroidering on socks, which I know you can. So you can definitely do some monogramming or something like that on some socks and give those as a nice uh, thank you gift to to um, to a male or female nurse or teacher. That would work. And then, of course, Val was saying Duncan had donut gift cards, and somebody else mentioned uh, somebody mentioned what was that? Something else. I thought that was not. I'll run across it, but anyway, um, lanyards. Yes. What about some type of embroidered lanyard? Yes, that would be nice. That would work for both, too, for both male or female nurses. I think that that would work really well.
And I know a lot of times when we, you know, in this day and age and stuff, a lot of stuff is not differentiated via sex, whether they're male or, female, or gender, I guess is the better word to say, via gender description, because oftentimes that's blurred as well. So we have to kind of step away from it. <laughs> I think we just give the gift, regardless to, uh, you know, unless we know for a fact. And I leave that alone. Okay, wristlets, Andrea said. Yes, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good gift too, because um, you can always put their name on it. They can put, uh, oh, I love this. Val, I forgot about that. Lunch bags and insulated coffee mugs. Yes, if you are doing any type of sublimation, anything like that, that is excellent, excellent. Uh, Carol says, we need a sock embroidery tutorial. <laughs> I said that Andrea and I discussed doing the socks. I didn't tell you we did Hmm. I don't think that they're difficult to do, but honestly, I've not done them. I do know I was going to do them and um, didn't do it because it turned out they weren't needed. That's what happened. On, oh, Andrea says she did a pair, so she can do the tutorial. She did a pair. <laughs> I didn't do it. Now, there is an apparatus on Amazon specifically for um, stitching on socks, embroidering on socks. Didn't buy it. Haven't tried. But I don't know if it's easy or not now. What I had planned to do if I had done the shop was to use my Durky Fast Frame. And I didn't think it was going to be an issue with it by using the Durky Fast Frame, to be perfectly honest about it. Because I have a small enough one that I think would have gotten down in there and did the job and been done with it. So if you have a Durky Fast Frame or anything like that, I don't think embroidering on a an adult sock would be an issue. Now, children's socks, something like that might be a problem because they're so small, but an adult sock. But again, this apparatus on Etsy, I think it's 20 some odd dollars, but I think it's two parts. One is supposed to be for children. One is supposed to be for an adult. Again, I didn't buy it, so I don't, I can't really speak to it. I just know it's there. And um, I don't know if Andrea bought it or not. Um, and if you did, Andrea, did you use that when you did your sock? Uh, I don't remember. I do see where you said it wasn't fun. <laughs> and hello, my son is on here next to you, LLC. Thank you for stopping by. And Carol, you said um, it's a bummer to hear. I don't, now, Carol, again, if you're talking about an adult, oh, so you did buy it and you did use it. Okay, so I don't guess it's that simple to use. I, I don't own one, so I never tried it. Like I said, when I was going to do it, I looked at the sock and I looked at my Durky Fast Frame and I didn't think it was going to be an issue. Um, so I, but I did, it, I wasn't, it wasn't needed for me to do it. So I didn't do it. Um, but I can, I can, I can give it a try and see and come back with to you guys at some point and let you know how that worked. I don't anticipate it being a problem on an adult song. Now, when it comes down to children, like I said, that's a different story. Also, using that apparatus, 
Uh, I have no clue. I have no clue. But as I was going to say to you, Carol, if you have a dirty fabric, give it a try. Now, I don't know of um, any other way of doing it. And even with the dirty fast front, it would definitely have to be an adult sock because it has to be big enough to go into the frame and then around the um, that bar, that um, the bobbin bar thing. So you got to have enough space for that. And then it's got to move around. So you need a nice size sock. It can't be anything stretchy. Now you probably could do it on a single needle machine. Even easier, maybe. Kind of in the same concept that you do when... Um, You're doing onesies and stuff like that where you just kind of have to pull things back out of the way so you got room to stitch around. But I would have to think about that. I don't see where it's going to be a simple job unless you got a big enough sock. <laughs> you have to have a big enough sock. But but people do embroider on socks, so I mean, it it it's it's possible. People embroider on socks, so it is possible. I'll have to I'll have to play with that, and then if I'm successful, then I'll come back and let you guys know about it, and and and, and give you a little a little uh maybe try to get a demo. Now I tell you what I was trying to do, uh, even before, um coming on tonight i am trying to figure out how to set up my uh set up my two cameras and um my son is on here so maybe he can help me at some point um and i even got got in touch with Streamyard and asked them how to do two cameras because i'm set up where i can do it through them and they said all i had to do was hook up the two camera to my to my laptop and select it on StreamYard, and voila, there it is. The problem is, it's not recognizing my camera, and I don't know what to do to make it recognize the camera. Now, I plugged in the camera HDMI um, cord into the camera and the HDMI cord into the laptop, and it didn't show up in my StreamYard. I went into my settings and I didn't see it and I didn't know how to get it to recognize it. It's not, it's not a um, Bluetooth. And I did select add a device because I thought since it was plugged into my computer, it would recognize it. It didn't, it didn't find the camera. So I don't know what the issue is. And, and I brought all that up is because I want to do some demos because that would be an excellent opportunity to figure out how to do the sock and then do the demo back there. But I have to have the other camera set up to do that. And that that's my goal at some point. So I am trying, but I have not figured out yet how to get my camera set up. Now, Leslie, you're on here and you're the photographer person. Maybe you can help me out um, besides telling me to read my mail. <laughs> ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know what setting or what hat, what button has to be pushed or whatever needs to be done to get my computer because I believe that is the issue. The computer, the laptop has to recognize, and you're laughing, <laughs> Leslie's laughing at me. The, the, um, the laptop has to recognize the camera that I have plugged into it, and it did not recognize it with the HDMI cord that came with the camera, which is surprising to me because I had it plugged in to the HDMI port on my camera, DSLR. 
and I had it plugged into the HDM into the um I guess it was the HDM, whatever port the other end fit into. I don't I can't remember if it was because I got two different cameras. One is a camcorder, one's a camera. And uh I believe the S the DLS DLSR camera plugs into the HDMI port on my laptop. And the camcorder plugged into my USB port on my laptop. But either way, my laptop did not recognize the camera. The camera was on. It had a memory card in it. It didn't recognize it. I don't know what else to do. Because when I when I talked when I chatted with um, Streamyard, they pretty much made it sound super super simple, which they always do because they don't know what they're talking about either. A lot of times you talk to these texts and they don't have a clue; they'll just spit something out to get you off to chat. Oh, you just plug this here and plug this here, and bam, there it is. And it never happens that way, so it didn't happen. And if and when I get the two cameras to talk to each other, to talk to the laptop, whereas I can actually switch from camera to camera. And I thought maybe I need a switch, but they didn't say I needed a switch. So I don't know if I actually need a switch apparatus. I don't know. So if it's anybody out there that has a clue, <laughs> let me know, please, because I want to be able to do a few demos and stuff with you guys. But until I can figure out a way to get those two cameras on here talking to each other, I managed to figure out how to share my screen. So I'm pretty sure I'll be able to figure out how to do the other one, but I haven't got it done yet. So... Uh, Okay, uh, Andrea says she did hers on a single needle and you were able to stitch it out. Your problem was a second sock. Try it. I will try it again, but on the 10 needle. Okay, all righty. And I'm assuming, Andrea, you did it on your Stellar and you did it using that apparatus that you bought from Amazon. I'm assuming. I didn't. I I don't remember our conversation. I I do remember us talking about it. I don't remember what the the final result was. Okay, she said yes. So so uh, I I don't know how that would how that would um would turn out. But we'll work on. I'll work on it. I'll figure it out. Um, I have some projects coming up. Once I finish those projects and stuff, then I'll be able to get back to doing some of my my channel tutorials and all that kind of stuff again. I just need to get a lot of stuff out the way that, that's been going on. I'm currently now working on some graduation stoves. <laughs> and I have one that I am dreading. Leslie, you cursed me. I was talking to you about you can do it. Now, Taisha is telling me I can do it. <laughs> I got this stole I got to take apart because I don't see any way, other way of getting it done without taking it all the way apart so I can hoop it. Then I have to sew it back together. And oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But I got to do it. It's a commitment. And I, and, I, and I have to have it done next week. Because. Yep. Her party. My daughter-in-law's graduation party. Is. Saturday, a week from Saturday, and she wants to have these stoves. When I said these, I mean three done and ready. 
And I realized that I needed some 65 nine needles, so I had to get those. I realized that I needed some 60 weight orange thread, so I had to get that. And I'm waiting on these things to come. I have my needles and I'm waiting on the thread. And then I realized today, since it's white satin, that I really need some beige tearaway stabilizer. I couldn't find any that I would get in time. So I ordered some beige no show mesh cutaway stabilizer that I should be getting tomorrow. Not tomorrow, Thursday. And I'm hoping I have my thread by Thursday because I want to get this stuff done. And I have to be honest about it and up front and, and um, transparent. I've already messed up one. I got happy. I got, ex well, that's not true. I didn't get happy and excited. I got happy and excited with the results because I put this thing on there. And I this, this is the real easy one to do because I only had to put a name down at the bottom and some patches. I got the patches on. I got the name on. It's all looking good. It's lined up. Everything looked perfect. And took it off of the machine and was unhooping it. And guess what? I could not unhoop it because I done stitched the thing together. I did one side perfect. The second side, I stitched it together. Now, how in the world did I do that? I was so angry. I was livid. Why am I still making those kind of mistakes? I was so mad. I was so mad. I was so mad. So naturally, that has to be repurchased, coming out of my pocket, and done all over again. So was not happy. So that just added uh, insult to injury because that's three sashes. But don't tell I said that. <laughs> you do what you do for your family. But that was not something that <laughs> was on my list of things to do in my lifetime. <laughs> and I tell you what, I don't plan to do that again. I don't don't bring me no graduation sashes. No, I don't want to do them. I don't want to do them. Those things are too important, too special and too much trouble and people don't want to pay you what it's worth and i'm just put it up front with that they don't want to pay you what it's worth to go through that headache and so with that being said deborah you said i stitched pickleball paddles on a pair of socks. They came out pretty nice. I purchased a sock tool from Amazon. So, so you can show us how to do that. So did that tool work well for you? I Like I said, I didn't buy the tool, so I don't know how it works. And obviously it works fine. Did you do that on your, what machine did you do it on, Deborah? Did you do it on your 10 needle machine? Let me know. So I might end up having to buy that that um, that tool from Amazon. I think that thing costs $26, I think. I think it costs twenty six dollars. Let me check right quick. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Here it is. Twenty eight dollars.
Okay. But that's kind of weird. Why does it cost so much money? According to according to what I'm looking at, you said you did it on your single needle. What is it? What is it? Where are you? You did it on a single needle machine. And Carol, you said my nephew is graduating from high school. Gift ideas, anyone? Maybe socks. I was at his birth, so I am feeling really, really old. <laughs> that's okay. Girl, and he graduated from high school? Uh-uh, that's not old. That's not old. Wait until you graduate from college. Then maybe you can say that. But high school, no, that's just 12 years ago. Well, not really. What, 18 years ago? 18 years ago. Um, I'm looking at this this um, tool, and you can. Did you use sticky stabilizer, Deborah? It looks like sticky stabilizer. You stick the tool on the sticky stabilizer, and basically the stool just the tool just holds part of the sock back out of the way so you have a flat surface to stitch on that's what it looks like to me so it looks like it would not be difficult to do on either one of them i don't understand why it costs 28 dollars though that's my problem <laughs> That is my problem. Why does this thing cost $28? That's ridiculous for this little bitty thing. Now, did it come with a big one and a little one like I thought I remembered that it did? Okay. Set includes two hooping aids. One especially made for infant toddler socks. Okay. So apparently it does have one. I guess that would be for a bigger sock and one for a little bitty sock. Uh, yeah, it is expensive. It's twenty eight dollars. That ah. Leslie, I, don't blame me. I took the sash apart and sewed them together. I did a test stitch on fabric similar and got the spacing before I stitched it out. Yeah, I know. And you didn't charge enough money for it. Because you you I'm having to do the exact same thing that you did because there's no other way of doing it correctly uh, as far as this um, this sash thing is concerned. And mine is satin. Was yours satin as well? I don't remember. But I do remember that you had to take it loose because that's the only way you can hoop it. And um, I didn't buy any fabric yet, but I'll probably do that and stitch the sample on it just to see how it's going to go. But I checked my, my uh, dime, where is the thing so you can see it yet, my dime uh, embroidery compass. And if you guys don't have one, you really need to get one. You can get it off of Amazon for 20 bucks when they have them. It's $25 on dime. But anyway, it is your embroidery compass and it helps you decide what fabrics and needle and stabilizer works best with the, what needle and stabilizer works best with the fabric that you're going to be stitching on. And because I am going to be stitching on satin, polyester, or acetate, it tells me that I need a med medium weight tearaway or a medium soft tearaway or a heavy soft tearaway for more detailed designs or higher stitch counts. So medium tearaway would be what I need in a 7511 ballpoint needle would be fine. So that's fine. I don't have any issues with that. My problem is I don't have 
um, a tearaway. And I was looking at this this um, video today, and it recommends that you use a beige um, stabilizer when you're when you're stabilizing white. And this is stark white. And my goal is to not to, not to be able to see the stabilizer at all. So do I use a beige cutaway or do I use a white tearaway and just hope that I get it all torn away and they don't see it because I don't want I don't want any stabilizer to show up through that satin because I want everything to look perfect. So that's that's where I am. Okay. Deborah, you said the price has definitely gone up. I got the infant sock and adult sock for 20 bucks about a year ago. Really? About a year ago, I think it was around $26. Well, the last time I looked at it, and I don't know if that's been a year ago, it has gone up from, from the last time I looked at it because I think it was $26 the last time I saw it. It was not $28. That much, I know. But, um, yeah. And Robin, you say, uh, would no show mesh be invisible on it? I'm thinking it will be. I'm thinking it will be. Um, especially if I can cut it close enough where you don't really see any outline or anything at all. I'm thinking it's going to be okay. But. The last time I, I stitched on satin, it puckered. And I was not happy with the results. So that's why I was trying to stick to what is suggested and recommended by, quote unquote, the experts, because I don't want, I don't want it puckering and I don't want to have to do it again or pick it out or anything like that. I wanted it to, to be perfect and smooth, but I'm going to do exactly what Leslie did. I'm going to get some satin material and stitch on it and see how it turns out before I actually stitch on the final product because I don't, I want it to look absolutely perfect if at all possible. And, um, I just don't want to take it and lose, put it back together. <laughs> I'm more concerned about that than I am stitching on the thing. That's a shame. Just the mere thought of having, because I got to do both sides. I got to do both sides. She wants stuff on this side and stuff on this side. And, and I have to tell you, I am, um, I'm not charging her what it's worth and I should, but I'm not. Um, it's family. I still should, but I'm feeling kind of guilty because I messed up the first one, and uh, which I'm replacing out of my own pocket. So it well actually comes off of my bill. And I don't want her to feel like I inflated the bill to cover that cost because I already had, anyway, that's a family drama. <laughs> That's a family drama. All I know, all I know, all I know is that anybody that has to do these graduation sashes, just make sure that you know what you're getting into before you say yes. Unless you're absolutely good at it and comfortable with it and all of that. I've never done one before. Um, I know what to do. But knowing what to do and doing it is two different things. And then you're always nervous when it's your first time doing it and you want to make sure that you do a really good job. So that's kind of where I am. And yes, Robin, you uh, you got to love your family. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, it, it, you know, 
it's easy to, to somebody that's not in the family it's easy to say no i'm not going to do it or this is what it's going to cost take it a leave. <laughs> but when you're dealing with family and you know it's something that they want and need and you care about them and you want them to have it you want them to be happy and this that and the other and on and on and you know it, it just gets to be it just gets to be that's all i like to say <laughs> That's all I can say. So those of you that, that um, if you've never done a graduation sash, especially the satin ones and the ones that, that you're going to end up having to take a loose and stuff, just know what you're doing. And can wood patches work for the sash? Not what she wants on it. Um, now, Andrea said it can be sublimated. I did not know it could be sublimated. Uh, I don't even think if I looked at the material, it's satin poly. It's not polyester. I don't know how you can can um, sublimate on it. Now, can you put vinyl on it? Yeah, but I don't want to put vinyl on it. I don't. I'm not a vinyl person. Um, Leslie, the sash was velvet. Okay, that was better. There, except for, anyway, there was embroidery on it already. Yes, I remember that. And you wanted to match it up. Use regular cutaway similar to what was already in there. I couldn't afford to mess it up as it was an Eastern Star sash for $175. And you got paid um, $45. Yeah. Well. I do think that you undercharge. I think we mentioned that before, but I think velvet is easier to stitch on than satin. Uh, satin slips and slides and moves and carry on and puckers. And I've, like I said, I've stitched on satin and I was not happy with the results that's another reason why i'm a little uh, uh, nervous because you've got to make sure it's hooped correctly with the right stabilizer or you cannot have good results and that's why i'm definitely going to get some satin material and stitch on it and make sure whatever stabilizer i use it is going to not pucker and um, I might even float it now that I think about it. Now that I think about it, I might even float it. Because I was watching this video today, and this particular lady said that, uh, what was it, Ruthie's Notion. And she was doing a little tutorial on the on the ten needle machine, and 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 and, and um, she was talking about hooping and, and 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 stabilizers and 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 maintenance. And I mean, she had a whole. It was a pretty long video. She was talking about a whole lot of stuff. But she says that she hoops most of her thing. I mean, not hoop, floats. She floats most of her design her uh, embroidery which i would not do i would not float everything but that may not be a bad idea as far as this particular project i don't know I'm, I, i'd have to think about it really in order not to get any puckering because that that is my biggest concern i don't want anything to pucker i want it to, to just be nice and flat and smooth and don't show through in all of that. I'm not worried that much about getting it straight and all that kind of stuff like that because I got my camera and, and all of that. And, you know, if you line up them, I don't have to line it up against anything. So you just go straight down. That part shouldn't be a big deal. It's just making sure it doesn't pucker. That's my biggest problem. And with the patches work for the sash, Carol, no because there's no patch for what she wants on it she wants her 
major spelled out vertically going down the sash. It's not a design per se or, or anything. It is actually a word going down. Now, could you do vinyl? Yeah. Like I said, I'm not a vinyl person. And it would have to be heat pressed. And I have not heat pressed satin. I don't know how that would work either. Okay. I don't know how that would work. So I think I'm pretty much stuck. <laughs> I think I'm pretty much stuck. But I think I'll be okay. As long as I do do my, my practice. As long as I do my practice, my sample, and make sure that I know what it is I'm dealing with and, and, and try it. And, and make sure I know exactly what the outcome is going to be based upon different scenarios. And um, with that being said, again, when you're talking about pricing something, you have to take all of those things into consideration. Because if you don't take all those things into consideration, um, you may end up losing money versus making money. Because when I stop and look at what all I've had to do to get prepared to do this project, everything that I've had to buy myself, I mean, I had to buy new needles. I had to buy special needles, special thread, because one of, one of the sashes has small letters. And um, the needles, okay, the needles are my needles, but the thread, I don't use that color thread for anything. Well, not anything. Rarely do I use that color thread. And I did not have any 60 weight orange thread. I got 60 weight thread, but not orange. I got black, white, blue, green. I got no orange. So I had to get orange. And um, now I'm talking about stabilizer. Now I'm talking about fabric. All of that just plus the samples that you had to do. Plus all the samples that you have to do to make sure that doing the project is going to come out right. Are those things that you charge for? Or is that just part of the job? It's expense. It's an expense. That's your thread. That's your stabilizer. That is your time. Should all of that be included in the cost of doing the project? And I'm talking about, we're talking about outside of family. We're just talking about in general, as a business. If someone came up to you and asked you to do a, a sash like the one that I'm doing, like the one that Leslie had to do, and all of the preparation that you had to put yourself into to do it, take the whole sash thing loose because you got to hoop it. Because I don't want it to stitch through. I want none of the backing part of the stitching to show. So you got to take it loose. Then you got to sew it back together. And you got to sew it back together part of the way. And the rest of the way has to be hand sewn. More time, more energy. That's extra cost. Does that go into the cost of the job? And if so, how do you price that out? What do you guys think? How do you price that out? What would you charge? And keep in mind, this is for two sides. She wants stuff on this side and she wants stuff on that side. So that means I got to take this side of loose and do whatever. And I got to take this side of loose and do whatever. And then I got to sew both sides up. And that's just one side. Just one side. And the sash I messed up was the easiest one to do, which I guess is a good thing. But it was the easiest one to do because I just had to do one word on one side and one word on the other side at the bottom and put two patches on. And that was it. And I was done with that. That's why I did it first and got thought I was getting it out the way and screwed up. The other sash 
is three things on one side and three different designs on the other side both sides three designs on this side and three designs on that side now that particular sash does not have to be taken loose because it's one of these thin uh there's no there's nothing to take a loose so the 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 stabilizer will show on the back and she is aware of that, but it's going to be black on black. So it's not going to be that big of a deal and it is going to be no show mesh. So it's not going to be that thick. So it's not going to be that big of a deal that it shows. And I even have, or do I have, I may even have some uh, black, um, like that tender touch stuff, I think. I might have that where I can actually cover up stitches. I don't know. I have to check. But anyway, the issue with that particular uh, sash is getting everything even. I got to get all of these on here. And then the other side has to be even with this side. So they'll match up. You don't want them doing that. <laughs> so I got to make sure that everything is even going all the way down. So that's work. So that's what. So what do you charge? Seriously, what do you charge for those kinds of $150, $150 total? Is that is that your um, recommendation, Robin? $150 total for all three sashes? So you're saying, well, I wouldn't say $50 a piece because <laughs> um, yeah, that's more on my line. <laughs> that's more on my line. <laughs> oh, that's more on my line. So you, I mean, you're, you're an embroider, so you understand. You absolutely understand. You absolutely understand what my dilemma is because if I came back and told her that she had to pay me $150 per set, now I would not charge her $150 for the sash. The sash that I messed up is, is a giveaway. It's just a giveaway because it wasn't going to cost that much money anyway because it wasn't that much to do. So that's a giveaway. But for the, the two that I that I still, yeah. In my opinion, that would be a fair cost. That really would be a fair cost. I'm not going to charge that, but that would really be a fair cost. I, I I do believe that. And we didn't mention digitizing because I had to have three designs digitized, but that's been paid for. She paid for that. But that didn't, you know. So. My my recommendation to those of you that are listening, those of you that may have the potential of being asked flavor of love for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna show her this this video. <laughs> this part anyway. <laughs> the comments. But if for some reason you are going to do sashes of any kind, graduation sashes of any kind for anybody as a job, take into account everything that you may have to do in preparations for doing it and doing it correctly when you price it out. And if that person is not willing to pay like Robin said like $150 a sash, then maybe that is not a job that you want to take because it's not cheap. And that's why I was telling Leslie, she stressed herself out for a minute. She said, what did she say? Going forward, she said, going forward, I won't take a project like that because I stressed over it for weeks. I use fast frames and use the camera. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I might be using a fast frame myself. 
but yeah, um, it it it's it's stressing me too. And Leslie, you said you got the needle for the sixty way threads after watching Jeanette. You are doing too much for free. Yeah. Well, I'm not doing any of it for free. Well, that is true. I am doing it. <laughs> I'm doing quite a bit for free. <laughs> You're right. I um uh, yeah. My problem, my fault, not paying any attention to Jeanette's advice because it's family. I did not give her upfront price. And I really couldn't give her upfront price because I didn't really know everything that was involved. And But I said I would do the job. So now that I'm committed to the job, then she needs, she wants to know the price. And I'm committed to the job. She's committed to me doing it because it had we have a time frame here. She's really not in the position to go anywhere else. And even if, even if she did, it's gonna cost her more money. She don't realize that. So I'm feeling I'm feeling obligated. I'm feeling some obligation here. That's where I am. And um, I don't like feeling that way because I do feel like. Uh, I'm doing too much free, just like you said. I feel like I'm doing too much free. So, as so that that's why I'm telling you guys going forward, because I know what I'm gonna do go forward. <laughs> going forward, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna take a job. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do. It. I'm not. It's too stressful. I'm like you, Leslie. It's too stressful. I'm not going to do it. Don't ask me. Don't come up in here asking me to do no graduation sashes for nobody. I'm not going to do it. That's too important of a, of a project, and I don't want to be bothered with it. That's not my forte, plain and simple. But if anybody out there is interested in doing it or, or willing to do it or wanting to do it or however it is or however it goes, Make sure that you know what you're getting into and price it accordingly, because if you don't, then you're going to end up uh, actually losing money, giving money away, because I am going to get paid. I am going to make some money, but I'm definitely not going to make what I should be making. That much I can tell you right now, because I'm not going to charge her $150 per sash. I'm not going to do that. And so with that being said, I'm not really getting my money's worth. I'm not getting paid for what I'm putting in. Now, granted, the needles are going to be mine. Granted, the thread is going to be mine. But I didn't need, now the needles wasn't that much, 20 bucks. I needed to have the needles anyway. So that I don't worry about, to be honest about. I wouldn't have bought them. But I needed them, so I have them. So going forward, I'll have them. I would not have bought that orange thread. I bought it, no big deal. Not breaking the bank. But I, I ended up having to buy two sp spools because I bought the 60 weight and the 40 weight, the exact same colors, because you want them to match. So I had to buy two spools of threads that I didn't need or want. But I have. Because I want to do it right. And I want to make sure the lettering was going to come out right. I stitched out a sample and the lettering did not look the way I wanted it to look. So therefore, I knew I needed to do the 65.9 needle with the 60 weight thread. So I ordered it. I got it. So, you know, did I spend a little extra money doing some things and then I got to go get the, the satin? It shouldn't be expensive. Hopefully, it's not going to cost a, a arm and a leg. I'm not going to buy that much of it. It's just a little bit of it to do the samples and stuff of what is it, the quarter of a yard, whatever, and, and do some sampling and stuff. So that's my new. But the thing is, even if I only spent $30 extra on that, that's $30 out of my pocket. $20, however much it's going to add up to. That's $20, $30 out of my pocket. Plus, keep in mind, I lost money because I got to replace what I messed up. 
So <laughs> I'm glad I got a chance to see my great grandbaby this week. Because that way at least I got something to smile about. Because <laughs> I have to tell you, the I, I was so I was so mad when I messed that thing up because it just it just poured fuel on the fire because I knew I wasn't going to make the money that I should have been making. And now I'm not even going to make that because I got to take care of this mess up and stuff. Carol said, I didn't use those needles yet. And I heard about not using the needle threader on the smart. True. Thanks for bringing that up. You need to hand thread it. Now, there is a function on our 1055X. It's on page three. And it's a picture of a needle with a thread going through it. And I think it has an X on it. And it's towards the bottom. Or it's got a, 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 a circle, you know, that don't do thing, like no smoking type circle thing on there that icon and like i said i think it's on page three you need to click on that and on whatever neat whatever needle bar you're putting your whatever needle you're going to put the 65 nine needle in and what that will do is not let the needle threader try to thread that needle because if it tries to thread the needle which i didn't know until I heard this lady talking today. So it's perfect timing because she works at this uh, store, a dealership, and they, they, they fix machines and service machines and all that stuff. So she's telling me the stuff that she knows through servicing machines. She says, if you click on that, then the machine will not try to thread that particular needle because if you thread that particular needle, it can, what did she say? It can break your needle thread because it will get, it could get possibly get bent. Then once one is damaged, the whole thing is messed up. So you'll have to have the whole thing replaced. So if you click on that, then it's going to skip that needle that you have that 65.9 in. And it'll thread all the rest of it, but when it gets to that one, it will not thread it. And therefore, you won't accidentally try to, you know, the machine won't accidentally try to thread it and potentially break the threader. So remember that, and hopefully that's clear. But I think it's on page three. And if you understand what I mean when I say page three, when you go down to the bottom icon and you see this little icon down there that looks like a sheet of paper with lines through it, those are your pages. If you hit that and go to page three and you're going to see an icon that looks like a needle with a thread going through it with a little do not do circle on it, hit that. And the, the number of the needle that you have, that 65.9 needle in, and it will bypass that needle when it's thread. So I'm so glad I learned that today because I had heard that it won't thread. And I have to be honest about it. I had forgotten, kind of forgotten, and I wasn't aware of what that particular icon was for. I've seen that icon, but I didn't know exactly what that icon was for. Now I know what it's for and how to use it. And it's going to come in handy because that's exactly what I'm going to use as soon as I get ready to, to, to put that needle into my machine in order to use my 65.9 because I don't, I didn't have any 65.9 needles. And so obviously I've never used them before i thought i had some but i looked a while back and i didn't have any and which is kind of strange because i've used poly light before that's kind of weird anyway
That is great info about the machine preventing thread. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And thank you for reminding me because <laughs> I had forgotten. So hopefully anybody that is hearing this uh, remembers that or knows that or will look at that at the replay or whatever. If you look at the video all the way through, you'll get this little tidbit tip that's going to help you not break your needle threader if you ever use 65.9 needles. And you definitely need to use 65.9 needles if you are using the 60 weight thread. And you need to use 60 weight top thread because we use 60 weight bobbin, but 60 weight top thread for small letters. Anytime you're doing small letters, you need 60 weight top thread and you need your 65.9 needle. Okay. So I think that's it. I forgot as usual. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Please thumbs up. Appreciate it. If you do not mind, please do the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all of that. Wait a minute, I took the wrong thing off. And um Watch, watch the video, share the video, notification bell so you'll know when another one is coming up. And the thumbs up because that does help the channel. I do appreciate it and um, look forward to next week. Don't know what the topic is going to be yet. Something's coming up. As soon as I can figure out how to do this, um, this um, camera thing. I will hopefully be able to do a demo or two, but until then, I'm kind of stuck because <laughs> I don't know how to do it yet, and I know it can be done, but I don't know how yet, and um, we'll be doing socks, maybe. Who knows? That should be fun. That should be fun. See how to do a sock and um, stitch on the sock, anybody that wants to learn that. I'll probably have Deborah tell me how to show me how to do it, Deborah and Andrea, since they've done it. And I haven't done it before. But anyway, and ladies, for tomorrow, uh, so long, I will be getting in touch with you guys separately, probably in the morning. And um, we will go from there. So thank you so much. Great information tonight. Uh, some of see some of you tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. So I'm just going to say good night as well. It's after 10. Take care. You guys have a wonderful rest of the week. And I will see you guys next week if it's the Lord's will. Take care. Thumbs up. Good night, everybody.